Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is John, the RPG Lord. In this very series, you're going to learn how to create a dungeon that your players are going to love to explore and that fits perfect with your storyline. In this video, we're going to focus on general specifics of the dungeons, such as location and general power structure. I will go over 15 points that you must answer if you want to turn this map that we have previously created into a proper dungeon with a background and storyline. Now, the first question that we have to ask is, where's my dungeon located? Now, this can be anywhere. It can be in the desert. It can be in the jungle. It can be in a city. But you have to answer this question. For my point, I'm going to locate the dungeon into the Arctic. Why is that important? Well, we're in an Arctic dungeon, which means temperature might be an issue. All of that gives you extra avenues on how to make the game more vivid, better in your descriptions, it will also affect which monsters you can place into the dungeon. So yeah, where is it located? Question number two. Why was it built? Now, we said that we create a temple. Well, temples also can often be burial places. So I'm going to say our temple was created for burial and for worship. So that gives us the background on what kind of furniture and artifacts you're going to discover there. So important background information. Next important question is, when was the dungeon built? Now, this can be important when you decide, okay, uh, my dungeon is still being built. So you're gonna run into parts of the construction versus an ancient dungeons that's hundreds of years old. You're gonna find spider webs, uh, collapsed passages, all this kind of stuff. I'm going to say my dungeon eh, is very old. I'm going to say 100 plus years. So that is important for storyline. If the players ask about that or if they have specific questions, you know that whatever you describe, you have to give it the flair of, you know, Number four, how was this dungeon built? That's not as important for most dungeons, but in case, in case, let's say you're doing a Beholder dungeon and it was created by a Beholder Ray, it looks different than, you know, mortar and bricks. So in my situation, we're going to say work is built. Okay. Question num uh, number five. What type of dungeon is it? We have already kind of covered that, but we say that it was, we say that it was a uh, temple. Now, number six, who built the dungeon or who ordered the building of the dungeon? Now, in this case, since we're talking about a priest, I'm going to say those were evil priests that wanted to spread their evil religion. Why? Because it gives me a background story. Now that I know that, I can plan the rooms accordingly. Number seven. 
the probably one of the most important questions. Who or what lives in the dungeon? And in my case, I'm going to make it undead. My dungeon is going to be mostly inhabited by undead. Now, here comes a question or a problem that many GMs face. What kind of monsters are we going to put inside there? Well, if you uh, start mismatching the monsters, in a logical organized dungeon, they're going to run into each other. Who keeps your skeletons from killing your goblins? If there's one main honcho that has them under control, yeah, that works, that could work. But otherwise, you wanna, how shall I say, you wanna keep within the same family. I personally would never match, like, undead with uh, humanoids, unless there is a very good reason for that. But again, that is up to you, and you decide how to run it. Anyway, for this dungeon, the main occupants of my, the main monsters are going to be undead. Is the original owner still using it or somebody else? This is a very good question. When you have like an overrun place of something, in my case, I'm gonna say it's been abandoned and and I don't know how to spell there we go which means the undead are free and there it has been left to ruins wherever super important question again is Where do the inhabitants get their food from? In any logically organized dungeon, for the majority of monsters, you must have a source of food. If it's a monster that is undead, it doesn't need food. If it's one of those special monsters that only needs to eat every, I don't know, 20 years, that's a special case. But otherwise, you have to have some place where the monsters get their food from. If you know that, you already have saved yourself some room building right there because you know you need to put some kind of a uh, food source in it. In our case, No need, because they're undead. Super important question, I already touched on it briefly, is what is the power structure of the dungeon? Is it a bunch of groups fighting against each other, hating each other? Is it one main boss, or is it several bosses? In my case, I'm going to say main boss that controls uh, the inhabitants of this dungeon. So they do whatever he or she says. We haven't decided who that is, but we will in a moment. Number 11. Um, we need to talk about the specifics of the entrance. How do you enter the dungeon? Is there an entrance? In our case, yeah, there's an entrance. But what if you have a dungeon that you can only reach via magic? So, in our case, we have an entry door. But we have to answer 
we have to answer other questions. We have, is it clearly visible or is it, is it hidden? In our case, it is visible. Uh, the entrance to the, uh, to the dungeon is like, if they ask in a tavern, well, where is this place? Do people know where it is or is it known? In, in my case, I'm going to say unknown. And I think my players are going to just stumble on top of that by accident. Is it guarded? Is there one of the undead standing guard? Or do they just leave the door open? I'm going to say unguarded. Nobody is crazy enough to go into an undead curate. Okay. Is the door, the main entry door, is it locked or unlocked? I'm going to say unlocked. It's closed, but it's unlocked. Then, most of, uh, super important, is it trapped or not trapped? Just for fun, I'm going to put a magical trap here. Or, most important, or for a later is there an item required to enter do they need a special key do they need a magical item but in my case no item required so those are the specific eggs of the entrance now okay well, hey, let's go to question 12. how does one uh, enter the how does one enter the dungeon In our case, we have an entry door. Very simple, very straightforward. How many entrances are there? In our case, we only have one. But it is important to know that because you can have a dungeon with more than one entrance. Maybe one is hidden. Who knows? But you have to answer the question. Number 40. How many levels are there? In our case, since this is just an example, I'm just going to say one level. And the last question. How many exits are there? And in our, uh, my an uh, answer here is zero. Why do I have say zero? Because entrance is the exit. There are some dungeons where you can walk in very easily, but you can't get out the same route. So that is all questions that you have to answer. Now, I know this is a lot and Definitely something to give you f uh, food for thought. But once you get used to answering all these questions, your dungeons are going to make so much sense. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like it, comment, subscribe to my channel. And remember, there's only one RPG Lord. I wish you a good day.